Okay, I got my good friend Cal here to help us out. Uh, we got two jokers. Cal, go ahead and take those. We've got a full deck of cards, right? They're all different, nothing special. So first, he's going to put in one of those jokers anywhere you want. Go for it. Next one, just tell me when to stop, and we'll put the other one. Stop. Okay. Put both of them in there. Just They're random, right? And we think, what's the probability of Cal randomly choosing one of those jokers. What do you think the probability of that is? Almost impossible. Almost impossible. I would agree, right? So, Cal, you go ahead. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Let's see. Oh. The joker. Oh, my God. You got it. Let's do it again. What would be the probability if he will mix these up again? Put it anywhere. Or Sorry. Go ahead and tell me again when to stop. Stop. Okay. Puts it in there again. What would be the probability of him choosing the card again? What do you think? So getting a joker and a joker a second time, what do you think the probability? How many cards? So now we've got 54 total. 54, then 154. Okay, but there's actually two jokers still. Yeah, so two. Two out of 54. 54 so let's yeah. see if he can randomly choose it again. Ready? Tell me when to stop. Stop. There? All right. Oh, my and God. And he got it again. Woo! So, welcome to Anywhere Math. I'm Jeff Jacobs and this is Cal. Today we're going to talk about independent and dependent events. Let's yeah. get started. All right, so today we're talking about independent versus dependent events. So first, let's talk about what exactly those are. We're talking about compound events. These are two types of compound events. So first, independent events are when one event does not affect the likelihood uh, the next event will occur. So let's kind of talk about that in plain English. Let's say our two events were flipping a coin and rolling a die. Now. If I flip heads, does that change the probability of me rolling a five? No, right? This die does not care what I flip here. These are completely separate. They are independent of one another. If I flip a heads, it doesn't mean I'm going to roll a six, right? The probability of me rolling a six is still one out of six no matter what happens here. Dependent events. One event does affect the likelihood of the next event occurring. So the probability of the next event depends on what happens first. Let's look at an example. All right, example one, find the probability of rolling a prime number and flipping heads. So we're talking about rolling a die and flipping heads on a coin. Um, now, if you think, again, we're talking about independent or dependent events, what would this compound event be, independent or dependent? And hopefully you realize it's independent. Like we said, these don't care what ha what the other did. They're independent of each other. So it's an independent event. Now, for an independent event, independent event, there's a formula we can use for finding the probability. Now, you may have done before tree diagrams or tables to find all the possible outcomes, and, and then you can find the probability that way. But that can take a lot of time. So instead, we have a formula where the probability of A and B, that's equal to, well, just the individual prob probabilities multiplied by each other. So probability of A times probability of B. Well, let's do that. So we're finding the probability of a uh, prime number and uh, heads. So I can just abbreviate probability of prime and heads is going to be equal to the probability of, well, what was A? What's that first event? A prime number. What's the probability of getting a prime number times the probability of flipping heads? Okay. So first, what is the probability of getting a prime number when you roll a die? Well, one is not prime. Two is prime. Uh, three is prime, four, no, that's composite, five, that is prime, and six is composite. So three out of those six numbers are prime, right? Two, three, and five. 
what is the probability of getting a heads? Well, one out of two, right? We know that. So three six times one half, well, I can make that simplified one half and I get one fourth. Here's one to try on your own. Okay, example two, find the probability of choosing both jokers. Now this is similar to what we did with Cal earlier, except with Cal, when he chose a joker, we put it back in the deck. This time, when we choose a joker, we're leaving it out. First, is this independent or dependent? If you choose something and put it back, well then it doesn't affect the next time. But if you choose something and leave it out, it does. So you gotta be careful with that. So this is a dependent event. Let's go over first the formula for dependent events. Probability of A and B is going to be equal to the probability of A, whatever's happening first, times the probability of B. Now this is where it's a little different. The probability of getting B after A, after A has already happened. Well, first, probability of A and B, well, I'm doing probability of, in this case, a joker and another joker, right? We want both jokers. So probability of joker and a joker, so that's probability of getting a joker times probability of, and this is getting repetitive, joker after a joker's already been chosen. Again, there's 52 normal cards in a deck. There are two jokers. So altogether, there are 54 cards. So the probability of choosing a joker the first time is two. There's two ways to get it out of 54 total cards. Okay. Now, what's the probability of getting a joker after a joker's already been chosen? Well, imagine that. So if we already chose that joker, now there's only one joker left, one way to get a joker. And right, we took a card away. So now there's only 53, 53 cards total. So that's the probability of getting the next joker, only one out of 53, because we assume we already chose one. Okay. So now we can finish doing this so I can simplify that becomes 1 and 27 1 times 1 is 1 27 times 53 1 out of 1431 1, so probability of getting two jokers without replacing which is what we just talked about 1 in 1431 very very difficult but if you're wondering what Cal did earlier Right? Is he just very, very lucky? Well, probability of getting those two jokers, right? A joker and then another joker with replacement. Remember, we put it back in. Well, that's two out of 54 for that first joker. There's two jokers, 54 total. The next joker, it's still the same because we replaced it. That could simplify to 1 and 27. Same thing here, 1 and 27, which equals 1 in 729. So, obviously, Cal is very, very lucky. Okay, here's the last example. Example three. Find the probability of choosing a heart, putting it back, and then choosing a spade. So, here are my cards. Right? If you count them all up, you should notice there are eight. Now, we got to think first. Is this going to be dependent or independent? The key phrase here is that we put it back after we do the first, uh, after we choose the first card. So that should tell you things aren't changing. It's going to be independent. The probability of choosing a heart, putting it back, and then choosing a spade. So heart and spade. Well, that's just going to be probability of the heart times probability of the spade. Well, what's the probability of choosing a heart? Well, how many hearts are there? There are one, two, right? Probability of a heart is two out of eight total 
times probability of a spade. So remember, if we choose a heart, but we put it back, so things aren't changing. There's still eight total. And how many spades are there? Well, if you remember, these, this is a spade here. That queen and, let's see, there's two more spades right there. I think that's all of them. That's a club. So three out of eight. Okay. Uh, we can simplify. One fourth, and that equals three out of 32. Okay. Here's one more to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.